If you enjoy urbex photography, you probably already know about Bielitz Heilstatten, the mostly abandoned tuberculosis sanatorium on 200 acres in Brandenburg, Germany, about an hour outside of Berlin. If not, you're in for a treat. Because TB is so taxing on the body systems, architects Hino Schmieden and Julius Bitzke wanted to invoke all the relaxing beauty that they could in their designs. Approximately 60 buildings which comprise this village worth of hospital were lovely in their day. And even after decades of decay, much of that original beauty can still be seen if you use your imagination. The first patients from the working class were admitted in 1902 as Germany was having trouble keeping the working class alive. The TB deaths were so bad. The four pavilions quarantined the patients from each other, infectious women, non-infectious women, infectious men, and non-infectious men. The main methods in the early treatment for TB before antibiotics came along were limited to fresh air, sunlight, diet, and surgery. The hospital was equipped with three operating theaters and the patient's diets were very well looked after. For sunlight, and you can see this clearly pretty much in all of the Bielitz Heilstatten photos, every room was well appointed with windows. Plus, patients spent time each day sunning themselves in the courtyards. To further reduce lung strain on patients, fresh air was piped in and special hydrotherapy rooms were conveniently placed throughout all the pavilions because doctors considered cold water stimulation important. Enormous 71,000 gallon water tanks atop each of the pavilions provided for this need. And you can see the still framework above the last remaining water tank on the roof of the Alpine house. To keep the patient's environment quiet, uh, laundry, cooking, administration, and other tasks were completed in separate buildings. A coal-fired combined heat and power plant was built on the premises in 1902, which included a unique water tower surrounded by a chimney layer, which heated the water inside and was the first of its kind in Germany. Uh, a lot of similar tuberculosis sanatoriums were abandoned at the advent of antibiotics, but this one's a little different. The German Imperial Army took over at the start of World War I and made it a military hospital. A young second-class soldier named Adolf Hitler having been wounded in the leg by the British at the Battle of the Somme, was admitted in October of 1916. During the battles for Berlin of World War II, the roof of the Alpine House was severely damaged by the Red Army. And that's in, that was in 1945. The Soviets occupied the hospital after that, treating mainly high-ranking German Democratic Republic officials. And there's a Soviet statue outside the gymnasium you can see on the slideshow. In 1990, the hospital admitted another infamous patient, the soon-to-be-exiled head of former East German government. Eric Honecker was treated here for liver cancer. Even after the unification of East and West Germany, 
The Soviets remained until finally withdrawing in 1994. Although most of the hospital village suffered vandalism, decay, and nature's reclamation, inevitably, in the decades following, a few buildings were restored and are now being used. I wanted to encourage you to explore that bit of history and more for yourself. So I am leaving links down below to get you started. In autumn of 2015, a treetop pathway opened to visitors who want to view the beautiful ruins from a safe distance. Thanks for watching. Thank you.